everybody, I'm Jenna Seaborn and we're here in the Heath Center Art Gallery with Nick Sorrell and we're here with his new exhibit. What's it called? It's called Exploring Abstract Expression. And as you can see behind us, we have some, some fabulous new artwork that we'd love for you to come check out. Yeah, so um, this body of work kind of represents uh, some of the things that I've been doing over the last three to four years. Um, it all, all encompasses uh, abstract expressionism, and these pieces specifically are part of a body of my earliest work from about four years ago um, that deal with uh, fluid style painting. Um, this piece right here particularly um, is one of my favorites, and it goes along with another piece that we're going to see here in a moment. Uh, this style of painting is you can probably tell by looking at it, a fluid uh, drip and splash style painting, uh, very much inspired by Jackson Pollock. Um, I studied him quite a bit and uh, I really loved his work, so I wanted to try and replicate that. However, he uh, was very well known for using the all over uh, um, method of drip and splash painting. And I wanted to kind of distinguish myself from that and do something a little bit different. And um, so I, Kind of coined a term called precision drip and splash where you use that technique but in a very precise way it, it looks controlled but i like it yeah kind yeah. of like controlled chaos in a way yes <laughs> um yes definitely and uh so by you know being very precise with with the motion and that action style painting i was able to actually create um, focal points and and points of interest and um uh, semi-recognizable subject matter. Um, astronomy and, and things like that are, I think, are really cool. So I touch on some, some different different things like that. And then from there, it kind of evolved. Um, I went into, I continued on with some of the fluid style painting and uh, went into uh, pore painting, which is what these over here represent. Um, so this is another piece that's part of the, that series of the Precision Drip and Splash. Um, as you can see, a uh, very similar style, uh, a little bit of a different color scheme. Uh, this one's called Planetary Formation, and um, it kind of ties in with the, the other one that I just showed. And again, you can see the action style painting, the repetition of, of, of movements, and it creates a very, very energetic um, feel to the overall piece. And I really like that. This is a style that I haven't kind of done for a while, but it's, it's always um, something that I've kind of wanted to go back to and then of course over to the left um, some other good representation of uh, some of my fluid style pore paintings So these are some of your earlier works on this side of the gallery. Yep, so these fluid paintings represent what I was doing basically from 2016, the summer of 2016, um, all the way through probably the summer of 2017, so about a year span, I was really focusing on fluid style painting using uh, acrylic. And one thing I guess I should probably touch on, these uh, drip and slash paintings are actually interior latex house paint. Um, and some of these other uh, acrylic pouring are more artist acrylics mixed with pouring mediums and stuff like that. So after I kind of felt like I had had enough of fluid painting, um, I, I really started getting into to textured stuff. Um, and the first type of medium that I was using that I really started getting into to texture was encaustic. Um, this, however, is one of my acrylic paintings, and so this is a combination of acrylic medium mixed with uh, natural sand and black lava, which are some really, really cool uh, textured mediums to work with. Um, I don't know why, I just kind of fell in love with it. It just it felt natural to me to um, create these, these textures, not only that you can see, but, you know, if you were allowed to touch it, you could actually feel it. This is an encaustic uh, style painting and it's used, um, I use the accretion method style of painting which is basically just building up layers and uh, you know encaustic is, is hot wax so you just build up layers of, of hot wax and depending on 
you know, which direction you, you apply the wax has a lot to do with uh, which direction um, the wax tends to, to grow, if you will. And uh, it's, a, it's a really fun process. Um, so when you do this, is it laying flat on your work table or is it on an easel? How, how does that work? Yeah, so I actually, I like to work uh, with my substrate or panel or whatever I'm using uh, flat on a table. I don't know why, it just feels easier for me and more natural when I'm doing certain types of paintings, um, and it, but definitely with this style for sure. So the, uh, the paintings, the encaustic paintings on the other side and these two, I kind of want to touch on that a little bit. Those were all part of uh, an art demonstration that I did at um, the Quincy Art Center last summer, um, summer of 2019 for the Art Fest. And so I had a booth set up there and I was demonstrating how to do this process. We ended up getting rained out, um, so I had to finish these pieces later in the studio. Um, but uh, that's, that's kind of where the name came from on the other side and then these two kind of spoke to me as far as the, the cool and the warm um, there. So they kind of got a little bit of a different name. But one of the things that, that I learned um, from Joe Conover, uh, like I was kind of talking about in caustic and textures and stuff like that, he, he really uh, taught me everything that I know about in caustic and creating textures and stuff like that. And so as I kind of graduated from encaustic and trying to apply these texture techniques that I learned to acrylic medium, which is what I uh, am more attuned to and, and generally prefer, um, I started looking at ways that I could try and create really he heavily textured um, pieces within my, my acrylic work. And uh, in, in his studio, he just happened to have this, this bag of industrial quartz sand that he uses for uh, different, uh, different things. And I decided to try and mix that with my paint and different acrylic mediums. And in doing so, it's, it's, it's created this, this amazing um, textured feel to the surface of these paintings. It almost feels like when it dries, it almost feels like a, like a concrete or a, or a cement and it creates really hard edges. And, so it's, it's texture you can see and texture you can feel, and I've just kind of gone nuts with it here lately, and uh, that's, that's pretty much all I've been doing. Um, Are they heavy to move? Um, they're not too heavy. These two uh, larger pieces on the outside, they're on a stretched canvas. The one in the middle is actually a, a custom cradled uh, artist board, so it's a little bit heavier, but... Uh, so all of these pieces are for sale and it looks like you have a wide range of prices. I mean, the lowest, um, maybe around $30 and uh, really something that everyone in every budget could afford. So they're, they're amazing. Yeah, you know, I've, I've been doing this for a while. I've been kind of navigating uh, exhibitions annually throughout the uh, the region here and so I, I kind of know what people's price points are and I try to try to cater to, to just about everybody depending on what they're looking for and of course you know the uh, the size has has a lot to do with you know the price. so we started off with the fluid style painting drip and splash things like that kind of uh, graduated into more complex textures and stuff like that with the yellow, red, and green piece over there, and this piece over here, I've started to combine those two methods. Starting off with a base of really heavily uh, textured acrylic and things like that. Then on top of it, I do uh, a splashing and dripping technique, which I think creates even more depth and uh, really, really just brings these pieces to life just by adding that, that little extra, um, you know, something to it. And so I, I really enjoy that, that combination. I think it's very visually appealing. And so I think I'm gonna to continue to do that <laughs> uh, as I move forward. So Nick, you attended John Wood. And what, what did you learn here? What kind of classes did you take? Yeah, that's a great question. So I uh, went to John Wood for graphic design. So in the midst of that, I was also studying studio art. So I took, uh, I took uh, like 2D design and stuff like that. Um, I worked with uh, Carol Burns, who was an excellent instructor. 
Um, I think I actually did my first uh, encaustic painting in her class as well, so that was a lot of fun. Um, and Addie Sievercrob, she taught um, drawing and painting and all that kind of stuff. And so I really learned a lot about, you know, the basics of, of design and, and uh, the, the study of, of art history and things like that from them. So then you took that from here. What kind of degree did you get? So from here, the, the graphic design degree, and then I okay. went on to Culver Stockton and I got my degree in um, art studio where I focused on painting, drawing, sculpture, photography, things like that. That's great. And Quincy is such a, a big art scene. There's a lot of opportunity here for people to learn in John Wood and the local colleges and you know, even taking classes at the Art Center, you know, so. Absolutely. Great. Yeah, the Art Center is a great resource. Um, the Hannibal Arts Council in Hannibal, Missouri is another uh, great place for classes and things like that. So they're, they're very welcoming uh, when you get involved with them, I mean, there's great people there and you know, you get to know people and it's like one big creative family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and everyone is very welcoming and let each other learn from each other. So that's great too. That's a good point. You know, um, getting around other artists and like-minded people is really important to, to kind of building on, you know, why we do what we do and to kind of help push us forward. Even when we kind of hit, you know, like a, like a slump or something uh -huh. like that or, my favorite of the of the smaller pieces um, this one's called 10 piece and it's called 10 piece because there's 10 different colors of paint in this piece and nothing about this painting was planned um, I actually chose the colors based off of other paintings that I was doing uh, I took the leftover paint that was on my palette and I had this spare canvas and with each leftover you know, a bit of paint. I hate to waste things, and so I would just use my use my palette knife as I do with uh, most of these other heavily acrylic pieces or heavily textured acrylic pieces, and and applied it on there. So, you know, a lot of the times we try to we try to really control how a piece looks, and I thought this was kind of a, a fun um, way of just kind of letting go of that control and just kind of letting letting it be what it is and, and just kind of going with the flow of, of whatever color, you know, I had left over, so. It, it looks like there's like reflections off the water and all kinds of different things happening. It can be sky, it can be trees. That's the beauty of yeah. abstract paintings. Um, you know, 10 different people can look at a piece and get 10 different vibes from it or see see different things from different points of view um, so that's one of the things that I love about it um, everything on this side is also a part of you know the acrylic textured series of work this piece specifically um, was actually uh, a canvas that I built while I was at Culver um, so it's actually a I don't know how I should put this it's like a it's like a double stacked stretcher so there's a 12 by 12 inch stretcher, which makes up the outside. And then on top of that, there's like a six by six or an eight by eight inch stretcher that I connected and then wrapped the canvas around it to, to give it this, this depth that kind of pops out from the wall. I'm not sure why I did that. I just wanted to see if I could, I guess, and actually make it work. And it, it worked out really well. It's the only one that's like that, but not to say it. Um, sort of how I like to to combine the different methodologies and things like that. Whereas, you know, inspired by Pollock and uh, the drip and splash paintings, uh, I try to do things different from the all over method. However, when I came back to uh, acrylic textured stuff, I actually went back to sort of what I what I learned from him as far as the all over method. And you might notice that with, with some of these, like there's really no focal point. Um, it, it almost looks like this is uh, a chunk of something larger, something you know that was like cut out of maybe something that was infinitely larger. Yeah. Um, and I really like that. Um, it really kind of plays around with the uh, the idea of space and visual space. We 
we'd like to invite the public to come take a look. So when you come on campus, just make sure you have your mask. And if you're sick, stay home. So uh, the college is open uh, Monday through Thursday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. until noon on Friday. So Nick has a website. You guys can check that out too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my website is www.ndsgalleryartist.com. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram and Facebook. Um, that's that's pretty much it. I want to thank you guys for for taking the time out of your day to to do this little walkthrough and for allowing me to to show in this great space. The Heath Center Art Gallery is such a, a beautiful venue to to show at, and um, I'm. Really happy to have my work up here, so thanks. Yeah.